another exciting episode of Live Coding. I'm your host, Matt Groves. This is episode 10. I skipped an episode on this last Thursday because I was traveling. I was actually in Portland, Oregon. My first time ever in Oregon. And I was uh, participating in an activity and I was unable to stream at that time. So I had to skip. And uh, just with that in mind, I will also needing to be skipping next, I think streaming all next week. Let me just double check on that because I will be traveling. I will be out of the country. Uh, so let me just double check while we're waiting for people to roll in here. Let's see. Um, oh, I may be wrong about that. Well, no, I think I, I think I'm right. It's not on my calendar, but I'm pretty sure I'm traveling. Oh, let me just look at my, uh, look at TripIt real quick here. TripIt is my handy dandy travel app that shows me all the flights and everything. Good morning, Coral. How are you? So, uh, yes, so next next week I will be in Barcelona, Spain. I will not be streaming from Barcelona. I will be at the booth all day at a conference called KubeCon, which is f uh, you know for Kubernetes, the old, the old Kubernetes conference. So I'll be streaming today, and I'll be streaming on Thursday, and that'll be it. Okay. Uh, and also, so we're, today we're going to talk about maybe spend some time on the chatbot that I built last time. Just a, it's a little bit of time. We're not going to spend too much time on that. And then I want to start going into some entity framework stuff. And uh, this should be interesting. Um, what I'm planning to do is actually build an entity framework provider, um, uh, entity framework provider um, for entity framework provider core provider for uh, Couchbase. Um, I'm doing well getting work done with you in my ear. Okay, well, good luck with that. Good luck getting your work done. Uh, Cor, what, what are you working on these days? Can you, uh, can you share that? Anything cool? I saw you were streaming the other night. Uh, you're doing some, some game streaming live. I wasn't able to stop in, but I did see you. I did get the notification. So one of these days I'm going to join your stream and, and uh, check out what you're doing. All right, uh, just my normal plugs here. Team Live Coders, uh, streaming some Borderlands. Okay, yeah, that's right, but Borderlands. I don't think I've ever played Borderlands. Um, but uh, definitely check out Coral R. He's uh, doing some cool stuff. I don't know if he does any live coding or not, but uh, yeah, definitely check him out. Uh, team Live Coders, this is a Twitch team that I'm on. We're all... Uh, streaming some form of coding or technology or uh, things like that and you can see the list of all the people on the team here and you know, the, you know some someone that picks from the list here to, to be streaming on this channel but you can get a list of all these different people uh, who are on this team just busy advancing the email marketing platform over here at a Weber hope I'm saying that right a Weber yes uh, coral is coral's a developer of course um, I assume he's still do, still doing development there. And he's been a developer as long as I've known him, so uh, uh, probably as long as me, if not longer. All right, uh, so yeah, C-Sharp Fritz, this is his channel. Definitely check him out. Some other cool people on there. Uh, Kerry Payette, Michael Jolly. Michael Jolly might stop in. He stops in every once in a while. Uh, check out all these people, Codebase Alpha. Check out all these people. They're all doing some cool live streaming stuff. Lots of different topics, but check them out. And speaking of that, my other normal plug. Let's see, Coral, I'm a technical lead, principal dev over here now, I'm knocking out some Python. Hey, thank you for the follow there, Mord Zuber. Mord Zuber, thank you. Yeah, so uh, Coral's doing some Python. I don't think our development interests have ever aligned very much, historically speaking, Coral. It's always been like... Python for you, and like I think you used some Qt back in the day, and I've always been sort of Microsoft track, you know, VB script and then .NET and SQL Server and so on. But that's still cool. Uh, Python is some interesting stuff. 
you should definitely stream some Python one of these one of these days. It'd be interesting. All right. So the other thing I don't usually plug is the Awesome Developers streaming list. I usually like to check this out myself while I'm plugging it. This is a list of uh, this is a doesn't not Twitch specific, but it's a list of people who are streaming, uh, doing some coding stuff like that. And I like to do a search here because I I stream a lot of database stuff, a lot of backend stuff. And so I'd like to see if anyone else show up on the list that's doing that. So there, there I am, Matt Grove, streaming databases. Uh, let's see, Rachel, uh, Rachel Tatman, data, data science. Yep, seen her before. Shirley Wu, seen Shirley before. Ted Young, seen him before. Go Maestro Go. Uh, Jack Mott, yeah, on the data structures. There's me again, Rachel, Shirley, and Ted. So no one new to the list here, but as you can see, you can just do a control F and see, look for topics that you're interested in. Maybe you're into C Sharp like me. Maybe you're into Python like Coral. You can do a, a Python search and see, oh, we got Anthony uh, doing Python. Uh, Armin is maybe doing Python. Uh, we got Btor and etc. So lots of people out there. Whatever you're into, you can find someone who's streaming about it. So definitely check that out. That's the awesome developers streaming list. Okay, uh, yeah, quick plug for my YouTube channel. Every video I, I have on here, it is saved to Twitch, but that's only for a temporary period of time. If you wanna go back to the archives, see everything, that I've streamed, including highlight clips. You can check out bit.ly slash Groves Tube. All right, TwitchBot. So I've got the TwitchBot running so far, and you can see that uh, it's been logging messages from Coral this whole time, and one message from Streamlabs because of more Zuber's follow. And what this does is every message that comes in, like so, it gets inserted into Couchbase. The entire message goes into Couchbase, the entire chat message. I'm using the Twitch lib client here. And so if I bring up the, uh, the uh, query workbench, you can see that I can look at the leaderboard. Who are the most, who are the chattiest people in the channel, uh, historically speaking? And, and so far, oh, hey, here's Calvin Allen with his bada bing, bada boom. Thanks for joining, Calvin. You can see that uh, Surly Dev is still number one and Coral is moved up into uh, second place. Isn't one. Thank you for the follow, isn't one. Thanks for dropping by and checking out the channel. Uh, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this chatbot yet. I kind of wanted to, you know, I'm kind of happy with what it's doing right now. Just this one screen, it's listening to the Twitch chat and it's storing everything in a database. We could make it do stuff uh, for us. Um, I'm just not sure what that would be right now. Uh, and and may just be that I just want to collect data for a while. Maybe we can use all this raw chat chat data in the future to do some machine learning or uh, demonstrate some really complex queries or analytics or some sort of visualization. Don't know yet. Um, and I did call this bot initially, I called it the Annoyatron 3000 because what I had it do originally was every time you would uh, send a message, am I drinking coffee? Yes, I am drinking coffee. You can see in my Oh, that's not really working, is it? Sc you gotta get me that green screen, Calvin. My Scale 15X mug. This is, and it's uh, uh, sponsored by SparkPost. You can't see it. SparkPost, there we go. This is a terrible coffee that I'm drinking here. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, I drink a little bit of coffee these days. Garapani1. Garapani1, thank you for the follow. Um, I'm actually all out of my good coffee, so I've... I've, uh, I've brewed up whatever I have around the house, which is terrible. But I've, I've found coffee to be, I'm still not a big fan of how it tastes in general, but I found it to be a more efficient caffeine delivery system and a more inexpensive caffeine delivery system than soda. So uh, I'm doing a little bit of coffee in the morning. If I do coffee towards the afternoon or evening though, I absolutely uh, cannot sleep. So um, just in the morning, must have creamer. Well, see the thing with the creamer then is that kind of takes away the point of like, you know, I was on, I'm on Coke Zero and I'm on black coffee. If I add creamer to it, then I'm adding calories to it and, and whatever else is in the creamer. So I don't, uh, I don't do the creamer. And if you know me, Calvin, oh, access log. Thanks for showing up access log. Thank you for the follow. If you knew me, Calvin, you know, I'm kind of a plain guy, you know, a black coffee, straight scotch, um, you know, uh, plain food. So black coffee is really on brand for me, so to speak. 
You found a nice fat-free one that isn't bad. Okay. Might check it out. You know, I tried the... I tried sugar in coffee. And I I found that in order to add enough sugar to actually make it taste good enough, uh, it was it doesn't really taste like coffee anymore. It just tasted like Kool-Aid. So... I, I didn't, I'm no sugar and no creamer for me. So anyway, so I'll, that's all this bot's doing right now. I'll take out this piece of commented code there. It's just listening messages and storing them in the database. So if you think of interesting ideas to do with this chatbot in the future, you know, there's lots of other channels that the ones I've listed here uh, on the, on the Twitch, on the live coders team and the awesome developers streaming uh, list. Lots of these guys are making um, chatbots. Uh, so that's fine. Good. Uh, so if I'm going to do something with a chatbot, I'm going to have it be something that's more backend oriented, more database oriented, because that's how I roll. So if you can think of anything interesting along those lines, uh, you know, lots of chatbots make stuff appear on the screen or, uh, you know, copy links and paste them into the chat, stuff like that. That's all cool. You can definitely check those out. I don't need to rebuild, um, rebuild the wheel for those, right? So uh, if you can think of any other ideas to do stuff with uh, with data, with chat data, I'd love to hear it. Because we can make that happen. All right. Uh, yeah, so that's what I was doing here. What feature would be interesting? And uh, databases. Calvin Allen says, just don't do overlays. Oh, Lord, what is, what's wrong with overlays? Have you struggled with overlays in the past, Calvin? Oh, that's some terrible coffee. This is my own custom blend of coffee. It's called whatever was left in the hotel room when I checked out coffee. It's terrible. All right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Coral says oof. The spammy ones. I don't mind the follower subscriber stuff, but when you get to the giant screen consuming animations, I'm out. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, some people are into that. That's that's cool. That's fine. I'm I don't necessarily need to do all kinds of flashy on-screen UI stuff because I'm bad at UI to begin with. I'm bad at design and things like that. So I want to stick to the back-end database type stuff. Um, so yeah, just you know, just chew it over. You don't have to come up with the ideas now, but just chew it over and just think. If I had like you know a month worth of chat data, what's some interesting things I could do with it? Uh, you know, uh, ideally, you don't, you don't have to, don't even just think outside the box. Like what would I do with all this chat data? All right. So what I want to work on, and this will be interesting because I haven't <laughs> blackmailed Coral says, <laughs> I know what you would do at Coral, do with it, Coral. Cause you've got probably, uh, months and years of chat logs that you could use for blackmail. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, I can never make Coral mad because he could probably do some serious damage to, to me and my reputation. You know, we all, we all make, uh, <laughs> well, enough said about that. Enough said about the old days of IRC. Um, maybe on one of the late night, uh, the late night streams we could talk about that. All right, so this next part is going to be Entity Framework uh, Mark Markov Chain Sense Generator. Yeah, could do that. That's that's a possibility. Isn't one. Um, I've never done a Markov Chain thing before. That could be interesting. Um, if we had enough data from, let's go back to our top tweeter or top chatters here. If we had enough data from Coral, we could generate with a Markov chain generator, some, some things that Coral might say, right? We can create a fake Coral bot or a fake Surly Dev bot. Could be interesting. All right. Okay, so this next part, I haven't practiced at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out the source code for this bot here. And I think I checked that bot into GitHub, did I? Or did I, I can't remember. That's Twitch bot. No, I didn't commit it to GitHub. Why don't I go ahead and do that now? I'll just uh, put this out here. Uh, this will be in mgroves on Git, uh, GitHub. 
I mean, there's not much to it, but if you want to see it. Um, all right, so repositories. And we'll create a new repository. And what did I call this thing? I called it Matt's Twitchbot. Very creative name. Uh, yet another Twitch chatbot. And uh, we'll put in a... Oh, let's not put in a get ignore, but let's put in a... Yeah, let's put in a get ignore. I don't think I have one. Visual Studio. Let's go with that one. And a license. Let's make it Apache 2.0. All right, and now you can watch me flail around with Git a little bit. So I'm going to uh, create a Git repo here, like so, using Tortoise Git. Okay, and and then I'll go to settings. This is all stuff you can do from the command line, but I've said in the past I'm kind of a a clicky guy when it comes to this stuff. I don't do this very often, you know, create repos and stuff, so I think it's totally fine. So I'll create a remote. I don't, uh, some people like to call this origin. I like to be more specific and call it, call it GitHub. Uh, no, we don't need to do that just yet. Um, okay, and uh, can we pull and see what happens here? Should pull the git ignore and uh, license files. Okay, perfect. And then... I'll do a commit. We can just see that it's committing everything that we expect. Oh, you know what? <laughs> that config file has my OAuth uh, password in it. So I can't commit that. Uh, initial commit. Definitely can't commit that. So I will just leave it. Um, Uncommitted for now. And remote, uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, thank you, Tortoise Git, with your amazing flying tortoise animations. And so now you can go to GitHub and you can see this amazing Twitch bot, except it's broken because there's no config file included. But uh, there's the URL right there mgroves slash Matt's Twitch bot. Okay. Entity Framework. So, uh, I haven't touched this in a while, but I did start uh, a uh, Entity Framework Core provider, Entity Framework Core 3 provider for Couchbase. And what I basically did was a copy of the Cosmos DB provider, which is Microsoft's NoSQL Azure database. And basically to start with, I just renamed everything from that was Cosmos or Cosmos DB, I renamed it to Couchbase. That was how I started. And then there were spe some specific, there's like one or two files that are very specific to Couchbase that I, I changed to use the, uh, the Couchbase.sdk. And that got to compile, and I eventually got it to store a document using Entity Framework Core. Um, however, it's been a while. And I, kn I know that the EF Core team is very active with, uh, with the .NET Core, or with uh, EF Core 3, provider and making a lot of changes. So I think what I want to do is basically just start over. Um, so I, I'm going to, so I, this is currently in, in GitHub as well. So you can see this uh, back in my GitHub repo. And this is, again, this is not a couch based thing yet. This is just an mgroves thing right now. Uh, eventually I want to put it into the couch based labs, but um, let's see. Uh, so we've got uh, right here. I'm calling it uh, .NET Couchbase. Oh, maybe it, I did fork it from Couchbase Labs. Okay, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I guess. Uh, oh yeah, because I think the other the other team did some did some stuff to this. So, uh, but anyway, I think what I want to do is in my downstream repo. I'm going to basically do it over again. Um, because I didn't, I didn't actually make many changes. And I just want to sort of start over because they, they're making a lot of changes to their to their library. 
Uh, so I'm going to just do that. Uh, so I'm going to call this one uh, old. And I'm going to reclone their repository from that branch, which if we go over here, uh, the branch I want to clone, I think the one I want to clone is release 3.0 slash or dash preview 5. So that's the one I'm going to um, I'm going to clone this. So normally I would fork this, but I've already got a fork. Um, so I'm just going to clone this one and push it into my upstream. That's my plan anyway. Let's see if it works. So again, I'm going to clone this here. I'm going to clone this. I'm going to call it something different. This is more following the naming conventions of Couchbase. We'll call it .NET Couchbase-EF. It's going to take a second to clone. In the meantime, I'm going to get some more coffee. I will be right back. Let me just uh, put a message on the screen here. Get in coffee. Be right back. So no one say anything offensive in the chat room while I'm gone. All right, I'm back. Just wanted to also show the coaster that I'm using for my coffee. It is a fine cork Code Palooza coaster, which I absolutely love. The cork coasters, Code Palooza coming up later this year, great event, and I will be speaking there as well. So, if you're in the Louisville area at all, definitely come by and check out Code Palooza. All right. So I got that copied over. Now, the so if you notice in this entity framework code here, Calvin Allen has donated a thousand bits. Oh my, Calvin, thank you for the thousand bits. Whoa, you are the pog champ. Appreciate that. I don't know what I, what I'm, what I do with bits, but uh, thank you for those bits. I've been trying to build up some bits uh, by watching ads on, on Twitch. But, uh, yeah, Calvin says, I have no idea either. I don't know. I'll figure something out to do with those bits. Maybe I'll spend them on a green screen. Can you buy stuff with bits? I don't, I don't know how it works. Anyway, thank you for the bits. All right. So let's, uh, let's figure out how this works. So remember how I did this. Um... So I think, if you, if you look at this, there's, there's, there's multiple solution files, right? SQLite, EF Core, EF Core Runtime, EF Core Cosmos. And I'm mainly interested in EF Core Cosmos. If you look at this, you can see that the solution contains all these different projects here. All right. So what I think I'm going to do is I basically want to rename this to say Couchbase. Right, that's what I want to do. And not just this file, but also in the source, there's going to be EF Core Cosmos folder, etc. Let me just double check to see if that's what I did. So, it's not exactly what I did last time. Because there's not, all the solution files are not in there. So I'm wondering, if I open up this project, oh, it's opening up in 2017. It's not what I want. This probably will give me an error, in fact. Yeah, because for EF Core 3, I believe, 
I need to use 2019. I'm not exactly sure about that, but uh, I know that that works. So opening Visual Studio 2019. So see, there's 11 projects here. Did I, did I do some sort of file save as with the, with the solution? Because I just want to copy just the solution. So here's all the all the projects that go into the Cosmos solution, including the test, which is all fine. Hmm, let me see if I remember how I did this, because I could copy it all over manually, but I thought there was another way. I was able to do this and sort of winnow out all this other stuff. We, I briefly just thought about making the co the Couchbase provider part of the uh, Entity Framework core project on GitHub, but there are some tricky bits with that because now it's a Microsoft repo. So who provides uh, support? Yeah, you know, feature requests and uh, what about licensing, all that kind of stuff. So we decided eventually. Uh, both of us, the EF Core team and Couchbase team, to keep it as a separate project. Hmm. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Is there some sort of uh, copy or clone solution? That may have been what I used. Hmm. Save solution as. Well, let's try it. Just not create yet another folder not exist okay so I'm going to call this one and these are going to be temporary folder names okay EF new save solution as and EF new let's see if that works is it just going to put a solution file in there nothing else uh, pretty much. So that's not what I want. Hmm. It's not what I want at all. I'm trying to remember how I did this. So I remember doing it, and it wasn't terribly painful to do this and what just what I'm just to review what I'm trying to do is uh, let's go ahead and close this is this EF project has a bunch of stuff in it some of this is like SQL server SQL light um, this you know, the stuff that I don't need for a couch based project I basically just need this cosmos solution here so, I mean, I guess what I could do, and so this is just call this one repo. Oh, I can't because what? Visual Studio is open. Let's call this one upstream. Why can't I rename it? It doesn't like me. Okay. .NET Couchbase EF new. All right. So what I think I should do is I'm going to copy these files over to here. And and 
then let's do another folder. So I just do a left right sort of thing. See Z Proj. So this is the uh, this is the one I'm pulling from. Okay. I don't think this is right. This seems like a lot of extra work. So definitely the this EF Cosmos Cosmos. So these projects that I mean they make sense, right? Hmm. How on the earth did I, earth did I do this? Cosmos. Cosmos, uh, put a four here called test. These, uh, these need to come over, of course. And, uh, hmm. I mean, it looks like pretty much everything, except for the SQL Server stuff. This can't be the way I did it last time. Uh, uh, Bach for Life. Hey, thanks for stopping in, Bach for Life. Do you have any sage wisdom for a boot camp graduate who has his first developer interview in a few hours? Oh, my. A few hours. Let's see. Um, what are you interviewing for? Bing, bada, boom. Thank you for the follow, Bach for Life. Uh, and, yeah, congratulations on the interview. Good luck to you. Uh, wow, what a question. Uh, yeah, I guess, uh, tell us, tell us some more about what you're interviewing for. Um, so maybe, maybe we can provide some, some sage advice, not just me, but others in the channel too. Uh, you know, lots of experience in this channel. Man, she's interview. You know, I think, uh. Interviews are so, they vary so much, right? There's lots of people who will tell you, you need to do this or you need to do that. And it's often conflicting advice uh, and because I think it really depends on who's interviewing you because they have preferences, things they want to see. Uh, with a few hours to go, I, I don't know if there's much I can tell you that you can correct in a few hours, but uh, hey, M MB Dealer, thanks for the follow. Yeah, don't panic would be the first one. <laughs> That's always good advice for any situation. Front-end web developer, have a nice recommendation. My bootcamp instructor works there and moved me along the process. It sounds like you're in pretty good hands. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it. I, I think some of the mistakes I see, that I, I haven't done a ton of interviewing, but uh, either on either, either side, right? But uh, some of the mistakes I see is don't, don't send in a resume that's way too long, right? I heard this rule of thumb a while back. It's that uh, every page of your resume should be equivalent to about 10 years of experience. That's just a rule of thumb, right? It's not a hard and fast rule. And so, you know, if you've got a lot of experience, yeah, have, have a second page on your resume. That's fine. Um, but don't inflate your resume to make it look more impressive by, you know, a, a five page resume, a six page resume. I've seen these before. And it just makes me think that this person does not have the ability to uh, focus in on their, the core of their abilities and, and what they expect from a job and what they want to see from a job. So avoid that. But that's probably too late. You've probably already submitted a resume. So, um, the second thing I would say, oh, the core has some advice. Uh, the interviewer should be well aware that you're fresh out of a boot camp. We'll be just looking to know that you've picked up the basics, ready to learn more on the job. Yeah, hopefully they are. Yes, this sounds like 
a company uh, understands your position, they're trying to move you along. The next thing I was going to say is exactly what Calvin says right there. Admit what you don't know if a question goes there. Don't be afraid to say, I don't know uh, the answer to that question. I don't have experience in that sort of thing. But don't just, don't just say, I don't know. And maybe uh, try to turn that question around and, and, uh, and turn it into something of a positive, right? I, I don't know. Um, let's see, you're doing front-end web developer. So if they ask you a question about Angular and you don't know because you've never used Angular, just say, oh, I've never used Angular, but here's how I would solve it using React, or here's how I uh, did something similar in, in my boot camp, something like that. Yeah, ask, ask more questions, try to clarify. Because if they're a good interviewer, what, they're not trying to get some specific answers out of you. They're not, they're not trying to check off a, a list, right? So this as an example. In, in interviews where I'm talking to someone about C Sharp or .NET, I will try to ask them questions like, oh, what, what does uh, public and private mean in C Sharp? Or uh, what, is, uh, what is a sealed class? Things like that. And I'm not looking for the right answer. I, you know, I can look up what sealed class means uh, on, on uh, the internet or whatever. But I'm looking to see if they can you know, talk through it, um, if, if they uh, can just, maybe they just admit they don't know. And if I ask them what's a sealed class and they don't know what a sealed class is, that's actually a good sign to me that they've never, they've never written a sealed class or had to deal with those before. So that's a good sign. So sometimes just saying, I don't know, can actually be a good thing. But yeah, just talk it through, tr clarify the questions, like Calvin is saying there. And, uh, and just, just keep in mind that if they're a good interviewer, they're not necessarily looking, they're not giving you a test. They're not quizzing you and, and seeing if you're going to pass and give them all the right answers. But they're looking for your thought process. Um, so, you know, they're looking for how you would go about solving this issue if, if it came up in, um, came up in, uh, in your job. Come back on Thursday stream. Let us know how it went. Yeah, please. That would be awesome, uh, Bach for Life. I was streaming on Thursday at 1.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern U.S. time. So come back and tell us, tell us how it went. And good luck to you. Um, and... Uh, you, you, I mean, you probably won't know if you got the job by Thursday, but let us know how the interview went. And um, yeah, uh, and some other, there's some other interviewing tricks out there that I, you know I've used in the past for various different things. Like one th one thing I like to do is, um, you know, just try to be like an active listener. Uh, you know, you know, if they're if they're talking or they're they're saying something, just just nod your head and and say yes and yes and yes just so they understand that you are listening to them, right? Um, I mean, there's other stuff like just showing up on time is, is good advice. Um, uh, dressing appropriately, uh, depending on the type of company you're, you're working for. You know, that's just, that's just stuff that's true for any sort of uh, job interview, not necessarily uh, technology interviews. But you'd be surprised how many people get those things wrong. I'm not saying wear a three-piece suit. Um, you know, but if you dress how they would expect, uh, you know, how they might dress, right? If they're doing business casual, you know, put on a collared shirt. If they're wearing cargo shorts, then, hey, Wild West, do whatever you want. Calvin says one level up from the company culture. So if they're business casual, dress business formal. Is that what you're saying, Calvin? I mean, that's okay. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to, if someone comes in and they're not wearing a suit, I'm not going to dock him for that because, you know, developers typically are not going to be wearing suits day to day, right? Hopefully not. If they do wear a suit, I'm not going to necessarily give them extra points either. So, but if they come in in like, uh, you know, uh, some sort of uh, no, no fear t-shirt or something, I don't know, what's, what's one of the, the t-shirts? Like if they wore a Pickle Rick t-shirt or like a t-shirt like this to an interview, you know, if the if the company culture is super loose and startupy, and you know, wear whatever you want to, then okay, maybe they don't care. But I I would at least put on a collared shirt for an interview. I wouldn't wear a, a comic book shirt to an interview. But uh, I'm showing up on time is super important. Um, 
yeah, I think that's just about all the advice. I mean, like I said, there's, uh, let's see, Cora, I'm always overdressed for interviews. I wouldn't feel right going in a t-shirt. Yeah, I, I, even if it's like, you know, some sort of super hip startup that doesn't care about dress, I'd probably still throw on a collared shirt at least. Yeah, you do have an in. So, I mean, another thing you could do is just ask, ask your instructor for advice. I'm, and you probably already have done this. But uh, I'll be interviewing with the developer team. The manager won't come in till the end. Seems like they want to make sure I'm a good culture fit primarily. You know, I, I keep hearing that culture fit. I'm, not, I'm never really sure what that exactly means. Um, so, yeah, but uh, the, the thing is with interview advice, it's like a dime a dozen. You go out there on the internet and people are going to tell you 10 different things and they're all going to contradict and they all might be true with, with 10 different companies. So, you know, I, I think the, the, those, those first two things, basically, um, you know, don't be afraid to say, I don't know. But don't just leave it at I don't know. Talk it through, and and try to come up with with some sort of some sort of answer. Get some more details. Uh, show that you're listening. Uh, one other one other thing, and this is probably also true of any company. But make sure you know something about the company before you uh, before you you go in there. Right? You know what they do and uh, what they uh, what they make and um, how long they've been around. <laughs> something like that. Oh, uh, so culture fit. Uh, Coral says uh, that you want to work here and you aren't standoffish. Okay, good points. Calvin sees it as won't rock the boat. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, oh, thanks for the follow, Blue Tiger Shrimp. Thanks for stopping in. Won't rock the boat is interesting because again, some companies might want you to rock the boat. They want uh, new blood to come in and, and point out things that might not be obvious to the current team. So. I don't know, but but sometimes they're looking for you know we're trying to replace somebody and we we don't want to make major changes so we want you to fit the same spot that the the person that we replaced uh, did so again that depends on a number of different factors. Oh, well, what was I saying? So the the so yeah, know something about the company you're, you're coming in. You don't have to be an expert on it, but know something about what they do, how long they've been around, uh, things like that. Uh, be honest about questions. Feel free to say, I don't know, and make sure to follow up. And what was the third thing I think I mentioned early on? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> ah, I already forgot. But anyway, good luck to you, Bach for Life. i uh, definitely like to hear a follow-up about that, see how it's going. Uh, yeah, it's, oh, there's a quick story though about knowing knowing the company as, as you go in. So I probably shouldn't admit this on the uh, on this on the stream because it's couch based time right now. But I came in an interview. I had a demo ready, and I presented the demo, and everything went great. Uh, it, was, it was a .NET demo and all that stuff, and I was using Couchbase and I was storing it, and I was querying it, and I was doing all those things because I'd done all that research, all that technical research, and then at the end of the interview. They said, do you have any questions for us? Oh, that's another tip. They're almost always going to ask you if you have more questions for us. Have some questions ready because that shows that you've done your research uh, and, and you're interested in the company and, and you want to learn more about it. Um, so have some questions ready. And don't, don't just say, oh, uh, no, no more questions. Have some questions ready for them at the end, even if they're really simple questions and you, and you maybe even know the answer already, go ahead, go ahead and ask them. You'd be surprised. Other. And, and ask them uh, how, you know, maybe you can ask a tough question like, uh, you know, how do you like your position at the company? Or what's one thing you'd like to see different uh, at your company that, uh, you know, get, get an idea of how they like their job, right? Because if they don't like their job, then you probably don't want to work there, right? This is a quick story, though, and just keep in mind, I do have the job at Couchbase. I work at Couchbase now. I've worked here for over three years, but I went into the interview, and my, one of my questions for them was, uh, what's the difference between CouchDB and Couchbase? And maybe this is kind of, uh, this is the reason I've been cursed 
with this because I have to answer this question a million times at the couch base booths myself. But I didn't do that bit of research before the interview, and they all looked at each other, <laughs> and uh, I got I, I got a bad feeling like, oh geez, this guy doesn't even know the difference between couch TV and couch base, and he wants to work here. But apparently that wasn't enough to not hire me. So they did eventually hire me, and of course. Now I'm cursed to answer that question uh, every day of my life, pretty much. Uh, but Calvin says, you'll never fully calm your nerves. You still get nervous after 12-ish years. Yeah, that's true. It's, interviewing is stressful. It's one of the most stressful things. But uh, I feel like you, you've been set up for some success here, Bach for Life. So you're not going into this completely... Uh, you know, completely cold. You've, you've got a, a company that obviously cares about bringing in uh, individuals like yourself who have gone through a boot camp and uh, you're trying to break into the industry. So it sounds like you're in, you're in good hands, just from the little you've told us. So mbshighway.com is their website. Very lacking in info. Uh, they're embarrassed by the website. Oh, that sounds familiar. Uh, <laughs> company I interviewed for before Couchbase, the company I worked for, had a... Had a a website they considered very embarrassing at the time. Um, so well, this one doesn't look too bad. I wouldn't be embarrassed by this website. It's a pretty good design. Um, Mortgage-backed security and treasury pricing. Yeah, so it sounds like uh, they're some sort of service that provides uh, market... Uh, Market market data, Calvin. I've worked for companies with worse sites. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is this is not that bad. Um, I like that they have simple pricing. That's very cool. Interactive market pages. Yeah. So it's it's definitely doing some data or some finance, financial data, uh, quotes, all that kind of stuff. That's pretty cool. Sounds like an interesting place to work. So good luck to you, uh, Buck for Life, and definitely let us know. So, sorry, didn't mean for the uh, stream to go in this direction, but it's, it's cool that it did. As I always say in these streams, um, feel free to stop and ask questions like this at any time. It doesn't have to be related to what we're working on right now. It can be anything. And, and as I say a lot is uh, on, this, on this thread, something my father told me when I was young, the only stupid question is the one you don't ask. So, Bach for Life, thank you for dropping in and uh, asking us this question. I hope... Our advice helps in some way. And definitely good luck to you. All right. So feel free to keep asking questions, but I'm going to switch back over to Entity Framework here and see if I can figure out what I was doing wrong. So. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of vaguely remembering. So I just have the Cosmos project in here. Uh, let me see. Let me look at this Cosmos project. EF Core. Oh, wait, I want to look at the old one. Hang on. Look at the old one. See how I did this. Okay. All right. So I think what I did was I created a whole new standalone project. And I just used NuGet to bring in Entity Framework Core. And that's weird because it's version 2.1. And, uh, and yeah. So, this, may, this might be the wrong project though. It actually might be on my laptop. This might be an even older project. <laughs> so maybe I, should, I could bring it up here on uh, GitHub. Because I think this is the most recent, uh, recent thing. So look at this. Well, this still says 2.1.4. That's that's strange. I thought that would have bring in version three. And again, maybe I just didn't commit this. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go get my laptop and fire it up and see. Uh, as it might have been, I didn't commit something. I probably should have. So 
Give me a minute, I'll be right back. I don't know what that message is. Vanilla frost, chocolate frosted? No idea. Be right back, getting my laptop. All right, I'm back. Got a laptop. Very exciting. Let's see if there's any charge left. Let's see my all stickered up MacBook. This is probably I'm getting a, I'm getting a new one, so probably in the next couple weeks this one's going to go away. This is the one I had for about three years now. Let's see if it has any charge. So I know I was working on this during the MVP summit, but I don't know, I don't remember if I committed any of this stuff while I was there. So, sorry you can't see that screen right now. I'm not sharing the laptop screen. Boot camp. All right. I've had this thing running. Uh, Mac all this last week. I usually run boot camp with uh, Windows on it. Okay. Let's see. Oh, you know, we can, while we're waiting for that to boot up, we can take a look at our leaderboard. It keeps logging me out. It's a really quick logout time on this preview version. Surly Dev is still in first place, but Coral R is just two messages away from being first place. And Calvin Allen, quote, close behind. Uh, Webprov. Thank you for the follow, Webprov. Thanks for stopping by. A lot of new followers today. This is great. 
Coralar with the Odang taking him into a tie. Oh, and now first place. <laughs> is this overall messages to the channel? Like I need to type more messages, that is. Uh, yes, that is it. There's a leaderboard for that. It's a, probably not a good idea because it encourages uh, messages like Calvin. <laughs> it's just splitting things up into multiple messages and being redundant. Hey, Mini Wheats, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, all I've got right now, it's not a leaderboard per se, but I'm, I'm putting all this data. <laughs> Calvin, you, you need to stop. I'm putting all this data into Couchbase. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but that's all my chatbot does right now is just collect data. Uh, Collect all the chat messages and put them into Couchbase. So you can see Mini Wheats has a paltry one message here at the bottom. Coral says I'm too lazy for this. <laughs> I mean, it could be easily gamed, of course. So I don't know if a leaderboard is the right, uh, the right usage of this. Does it collect the count with the actual messages? Uh, so the, the Mini Wheats just says, hey, thanks for the subscribe, Mini Wheats. Awesome, dude. Mini Wheats is another old friend of mine, just like uh, Coral here. Thanks for stopping by. So it doesn't collect the count. Uh, it co it collects, um, my query is doing the count, as you can see here, it's a SQL query, standard SQL query. But if you look at the actual data, you can see that I'm collecting everything, this this entire message. So you can see, I don't even know what all this stuff means, but you can see the, uh, you know, like this one here is you donating a thousand bits and you can see the badges you have and uh, all this kind of stuff, right? Including the actual um, message somewhere. Maybe that's not a good example. Let's see. Yeah. So here's a message that uh, someone said about uh, tons of legacy crap and options for how each era implemented things. And that was from... Equation child. So, yeah, all the raw data is in here. This is just a, a SQL query, a nickel query, to get a count of everything. Now, as this gets bigger and bigger, this query is going to slow down because I have not done any sort of indexing or optimization of it. All I'm doing is just collecting this data. That's remember not to say anything bad since you have blackmail material. That's exactly what Coral said earlier, that this is uh, definitely uh, the one use we could, we could put this data to is, is blackmail. Many weights. I feel if you had a lot of viewers, this would get insane. Um, maybe, uh, since I've got it hosted locally. But, and just to put on my marketing hat for a second, this is exactly what Couchbase is designed for. It's a memory-first database. Very quick at ingesting messages into memory. Uh, now, this query could get insane um, because I'm selecting a count of every single message. So that query could get insane. But right now, I've only got 144 messages in there. That's a drop in the bucket, uh, pun intended. Uh, I actually have a, a local database that I have. A, I've written my own app for to store my my family photos, uh, not the photos themselves, but data about the photos. I'm up to ten thousand items in there, and it's not even breaking a sweat with that. So, I mean, this is exactly what Couchbase is meant for: is to store this kind of engagement data. Um, now, whether my local machine is going to be up to the task, or whether this query is going to be optimized or not, that's a different question. But Storing this data is no problem. We're, I mean, we're at a very small scale that almost any database could probably store it at this point. But uh, this is the exact thing that Couchbase is designed for. All right, marketing hat off. Back to uh, what I was doing. I think my laptop is booted up now. Sign into that. But I, I, that's, a, that's a problem I want to have, though, many weights. If I have too many viewers that my, that my bot can't handle it, that's a good problem to have. Right now, um, Streamlabs is reporting six viewers, and I don't, I don't know how accurate those numbers are. It seems like there's more than six, but I don't know how that number calculates and it goes up and down and stuff, so. Ugh. This thing always likes to load Skype for business. Does your Twitch bot have any commands chat can use? I haven't done any commands yet. It's it's just storing data. Um, I, at the beginning of the stream, I, I, I brought this up and I said, uh, hey, uh, what sort of features could I put in there? Uh, and lots of people do Twitch chats, Twitch chat bots on, the, on live coding. So if I'm going to do something, it's got to be something data related, something unique. 
I don't want to reinvent the wheel again. Let's see. Calvin, I never noticed that number actually representing how many people show in the chat or how many people are actually talking. Yeah, I'm not... I don't know. That's six viewers number. I'm not sure how that's calculated. But uh, I just sort of take it as a rough estimate. How do you how do you keep Skype for business from loading a startup? I don't use Skype for business. I can't figure out how to uninstall it. It's really annoying me. But it's just on this laptop. All right. Bring up Entity Framework now. Uh, no, not on, well, on Mac, yes, but it's Windows on Mac. Miniweeds, using Skype in 2019, lol. I, st I still use Skype mainly for a podcast recording. That's about it. Somewhere in the system settings, Windows has an option, Skype settings, that is. Remember, this is Skype for business, which is different than Skype. I don't use Skype for business anymore. I use Skype pretty much just for podcasting. And I also use it to talk to... Uh, my my language partner in Colombia. That's that's about it. I really don't use uh, Skype much in 2019. Many weeks, lol. I use uh, I use Zoom for work mainly. This is not a very visually interesting stream right now. Uh, no, it's there. The Mac version doesn't have it. That's why I asked. Yeah, it's I don't I'm I'm not using it on Mac. Um, I'm using it on Boot Camp, which is Windows in in a Mac. All right. All right, I'm trying to find it here on my laptop. Okay, so it looks like that's exactly what I did. Okay. Okay, so close that up. Seems like a lot of people starting to use Discord for Discord for all sorts of things. Uh, yeah, I, I use Discord. Uh, I had to sign into Discord for the first time because of that. Uh, this uh, live coders team, they all use Discord. <sighs> Nothing wrong with Discord, but there's so much chat apps right now: Slack, Discord, Zoom. Twitch, Gitter, um, well, we used to use HipChat, but then, I mean, if you combine that with Outlook and forums and Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, there's like a million, a million places to interact with people. And so I try to avoid uh, them as much as possible. Um, so n I'm nothing against any of them, but, uh, yeah, I have to use Slack because that is what our business uses right now. This discord is all I see or hear of people are using anymore. Book for life is team Slack here. I have, I have nothing against or in favor of any of these chat uh, protocols. It's just, there's so darn many of them. Uh, that's uh, my main problem is, is, is chat sprawl. You know, back in the day, and we've, I think we discussed this before, but uh, back in the day with Instant Messenger, there was a similar problem, right? There was like 10 different Instant Messengers out there. And, but there were programs like Pigeon, where you could connect to all of them. Also, Matt, you logged into Discord in 2017, sir. Yeah, I, I, I think I logged into Discord once, 2017, when I was doing some streaming with, with my brother. We tried to use Discord, because we had all kinds of AV problems. We tried to use Discord to work around them. Discord is nice, but it's a walled garden explosion out there. Exactly. So I don't think there's anything like Pigeon today where I could connect it to every single one of my chat apps. And then at that point, I don't care what chat app you're using because it's all in one app for me. But there's nothing like that right now. Or if there is, it's only going to cover you know, a small percentage of all the different channels out there. Ah, that's, that's life. Calvin, I'm going back to MIRC. You can connect to MIR. You can use MIRC to connect to Twitch because Twitch is just a, a, a IRC server. Bring back ICQ. Coral mentioned Rambox before, and it does help. Kind of. I haven't looked into Rambox. I need to check that out. Let's see what that is. Going back to MIRC. Man, MIRC. I use that a ton. A ton. 
All right. So what was I doing? Okay. So what I was doing was wrong. Uh, I need to go back to, oh, that's no surprise. Um, get rid of this one. Collects web-based chat stuff into tabs and aggregates notifications. Well, that's, that's interesting. I don't know if that's going to solve all the problems. Bach for life. Oh, wait, I was thinking of MIRC and not ICQ. Do, do people say Merck? I always said MIRC, but I've heard people say Merck before. But yeah, I was a big MIRC user back in the day, as Cor Coral can attest. Used to say it like what? Merck or MIRC? This is one of those uh, GIF GIF things, I'm sure. Probably not nearly as severe. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these. I'm going to rename them. This is probably a backwards way of doing things, but should save us some time. Notice I'm just renaming anything that says Couchbase or anything that says Cosmos to Couchbase. Uh, I still desperately attempt to bridge everything over IRC with WeChat and Biddleby, but it's too spotty to rely on all the time. Pronounce it as an actual word, ship it. <laughs> I assume you mean my uh, rename. <laughs> yeah, just rename the three solution files, ship it. We now have a Couchbase EF Core 3 provider. <laughs> yep, fantastic. So this is a little bit of surgery I have to do um, before I get on something else. But in the solution file, I'm just going to look for Cosmos and replace it. with Couchbase, just a quick find and replace. So that's it. User doesn't connect to Couchbase. Matt, I take PRs. Yep, that's, that's how it should work. <laughs> Actively hostile towards users. Look, I can't do everything, all right? Submit a PR. I renamed the files. What else, what else do you want from me? <laughs> all right. So there's that. What, are the, what does dot settings do? Just some naming rules and stuff. I don't really care about that. And um, dot settings. Dot uh, wait. Dot settings. Dot user. L U L. Dot settings is resharper, I think. Oh, okay. Just want to make sure there's nothing Cosmo specific in here, and there's not. So that's good. All right. So at this point. Open these solution files, they're going to bomb because those files don't exist, right? So um, let's bring this open up again here. Um, so some of these will exist, but like EF Core Cosmos doesn't exist, all right? Let me just move this over to the side. So we go into source and EF Core Cosmos. I'm going to copy. Oh, wait, I'm at the wrong, look at the wrong file. I want uh, EF Core Couchbase. Right, so this project doesn't exist. So again, I'm just going to copy the Cosmos folder. Uh, Calvin, there should be a project renamer extension for Visual Studio. I've had to do this before and it's annoying. Hmm, do we know anybody that uh, is really good at Visual Studio extensions that could maybe do something like this? Who, who could we get to do that? Hmm, hmm, I can't think of anybody that has a really popular Visual Studio extension out there. Mads Christensen, <laughs> yeah. Let's see, do I know anybody? Let's see, Visual Studio extension for Notepad++. That's a popular one, right? Let's see, who created this one? It's got 17,000 installs. Oh, it's Calvin Allen, I've heard of him. Maybe he should create an extension like this. All right, uh, what else? Uh, Couchbase functional tests. So that's over in the test folder. What, no Emacs scripts? <laughs> it's the Christian singer, not me. Is there a Christian singer named, Ca uh, named Calvin Allen? And why is he creating Notepad++ extensions? I gotta see this, this Christian singer. This guy right here? 
Gospel singer? He's, uh, he's better dressed than you, Calvin. Okay, so that, that's the most famous Calvin Allen. You know, I have a, I have a um, Google search for my own name because I'm super vain like that. That's a requirement for being a developer advocate. Uh, welcome back, Mini Weights. And uh, it's depressing, the, the Google search for my own name because 90% of the time it's some criminal. <laughs> oh, Matthew Groves was arrested for robbery or assault or something. That's... It's only Matthew Groves that shows up. And I, I said this before, I'm not even the most famous Matthew Groves in my hometown. My hometown of Grove City. I'm not even the most famous Matthew Groves. My son is probably more famous than me. 99% of all my name is that stupid soccer player. Yeah, uh, that's uh, your, your real name is, let's see if I can remember this. It's, uh, it was... Um, your real name was Pele, right? No. Uh. <laughs> no I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna look it up. Hey, uh, no, please, no cursing uh, in the channel there, Mini Wheats. That's uh, that's one of the rules down there. Trying to keep it clean, please. Calvin's a mod. He has he has carte blanche to kick you out if he so decides. All right. Uh, so where was I? Cosmos. No, you're not what? You're not mod? I thought I made you a mod. Your only mod is Streamlab. Oh, well, need to do something about that. How do I make you a mod? Is it slash mod? Calvin Allen? Something like that? Did that, did that do it? There we go. I've added Calvin as a moderator. While I'm at it, I'm going to make Coral a mod as well. There you go. Two mods. So watch it. Watch it, Mini Wheats. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'm regular Captain America here. I'll, I'll just shout out language, and everyone in the theater will laugh. It'll be hilarious. Okay. Uh, these tests are pretty much going to be useless, I think, um, but uh, I want them to exist. So we'll create them. Okay, what else we got? So that's only three, I think, is the main Couchbase project, functional tests, and just tests. Everything else should work. So now the next problem is if we look into the source folder here in Couchbase, uh, all these files are going to have, uh, there's a command for your bot, there's a command for you, bot, auto purge chat that has cursing in it. So, I mean, I don't care about storing the cursing. It's just, it's, going, it's showing up on my stream there, uh, above my head. All right, so, um, but maybe there's something that we could do with, with cursing. Like, find the user who's cursed the most, or something, I don't know. <laughs> That's not a leaderboard I want either. Uh, anyway, the files in here, if you notice, they all have Cosmos in them. So it's Cosmos logging definitions. And uh, Cosmos DB context options, Cosmos entity type. So inside of Visual Studio, if we look in the actual code, I can do a quick find and replace to say Cosmos change that to Couchbase. But the file name is a different thing. So maybe you know this, Calvin, but if I want to actually change all these file names, I don't think I can do that in Visual Studio and or ReSharper. So, I to, so what I've done in the past is I went through and I manually changed all these names. Uh, I don't want to do that again. So what I did was I found a utility called rename it that can do that for me. I've not used this before, so let's uh, let's see what happens. We're going to search and replace. We're going to find Cosmos DB. I don't know of an easy way to do that unless VS Code can do it. I don't know. That's a good question. So I'm going to do two steps here. First is going to replace because I, I know this from experience that the project is kind of inconsistent. Sometimes it says Cosmos DB, sometimes it just says Cosmos. So I'm going to start with Cosmos DB and change that to Couchbase. I'm just going to uh, do a search and replace. I'm going to add a folder. I don't. I, hopefully this is going to be. Uh, it's going to recurse through all the folders. I'm going to find 
the project here uh, in here and we don't want to I don't want to do the whole thing I just want to do uh, the couch base folder here it looks like it recurs through everything so let's try renaming this files. So, yeah, rename 38 files. So that's good. Let's just take a look and make sure this actually happened. Oh, that was, that was Cosmos DB. So I have to actually find those. But uh, let's uh, remove that one. Let's try it again. And we're going to replace Cosmos, just Cosmos now, with Couchbase. So we're going to add that filter. We're going to add the same folder, which was C zproj that one there source couch base should be a lot more files now 60 files okay so we go in here you can see there we go couch base logging definition so I gotta do the same thing uh, with the testing files so again cosmos db place with couch base Add folders, and maybe I'll just try doing two folders at the same time now. Cproj EF test, and we got function tests, and oh, this is cumbersome, but uh, it's still not as bad as doing it uh, one by one by hand. Um, tests, and I did just plain tests now. So we'll rename all those files. 16 of them are named. Great. And we will remove that one and add a filter. Cosmos to Couchbase. Do the same thing here. So I know this looks boring, and it is. But it is a much better time saver than uh, what I was doing before. So functional tests. Add that one. And functional tests, or not functional tests, but couch based tests. We'll add that one. Name all those files. Okay, great. So now, I'll open up Visual Studio. We'll do the rest in Visual Studio. Hopefully, this will this will work. It'll at least open. If not, then we'll we'll know what steps to take next. Zproj. EF and couchbase.sln. So this is still the Cosmos provider, but I'm trying to rename it to Couchbase. And once I get it renamed, I will check that in. Then I will actually go and make some Couchbase specific updates. Hey, it looks like it all opened. No, no project has, uh, has uh, barfed on me yet. Quick extraction for a text message here. Yeah, no, Visual Studio update is available. Looked at that last time. So you can see, here's the projects, and here's Couchbase. And there's Couchbase there. Now if we look in the project, you can see uh, there's the couch. The file is named correctly, but not the actual code in the file. So we're going to do a replace and we're going to find Cosmos DB, replace that with Couchbase, and the entire solution. Replace them all. Yep. That's going to take a second. So 44 times it replaced it. And we'll do the same thing with Cosmos now. Replace them all. And 774. So thank you for that. And let's just see what happens if I... Oh. Uh, there's some sort of text template in here, too. I remember that. Um, yeah, 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 template. So wh where's that template at? That was a weird thing. It's like a .tt file, I believe. Yeah, here it is. And I think this is just to generate this Couchbase strings, which these are some text resources that are used in the project. I don't know if I need those or not, but let's we'll leave it there for now. Let's try a build and see what happens. See if anything barfs.
It shouldn't. Oh, it looks like uh, an error there. It does not contain an inclusive lower bound. So I think there's some things that are experimental here that it might be barfing on for both Couchbase and Cosmos. We got some fails. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a couple things that I didn't do. So um, the test projects, if you look at them, they probably still reference uh, Cosmos. Yep. So that won't show up in the find and replace because it's inside of a csproj file. Oops. Okay, so functional test, and we'll do this one. Okay, so that should be good. We'll do a build again. Streaming till about noon today. That's my plan. Ah, XML. Hey, Schmelly Orc, thanks for stopping in. Yeah, the csproj files are still in XML. There was a big kerfuffle about that uh, a year or two ago. They were trying to switch over to JSON, but uh, I think they settled on XML. That's It's fine. It's just the project files. You generally don't modify those by hand. All right, what do we got here? Unable to find... Huh? Oh, I missed one, I guess. Uh, does not contain a lower bound. What is that? Project dependency Microsoft Azure. Oh, there is no Microsoft Azure couch base. <laughs> so that needs to go. So I think we're going to start seeing real errors here because we're not depending on uh, specific couch base or specific Cosmos stuff anymore. Yeah, we're seeing some fails here. Yeah, I can't find Newtonsoft, I can't find JObject, all that stuff there. Uh, what is this? Yeah, okay. So that's all fine. So these are all going to be... Yeah, so I can't find Newtonsoft. All right. So we look at dependencies here in NuGet. We're going to add a couple things. We're going to add... Well, I think all we need to add to start with is the couch base. Net client, which is just the couchbase .NET SDK, which is what this is going to need to rely on fundamentally to interact with couchbase. So if you can think of Entity Framework Core as kind of like a wrapper, um, it does a lot, a lot more than just a simple wrapper, but you can think of it kind of like a wrapper. So behind the scene, that's wrapper with a W, by the way, not DJ EF Core. But uh, behind the scenes, it's using like ADO.net or uh, Cosmos SDK or something like that to actually interact with the database. And the rest of the stuff it's doing around that. So, wow, why are we showing up here? Did I spell something wrong? Couchbase net client. Hmm? Oh, that's another weird thing. This is using a .NET Core package source. And I need to change that to use NuGet. That was a, I remember this as well. So by default, when you create a new project, it's going to assume you're going to use NuGet as your package source. But for whatever reason, this project, when you fork it, is using this, uh, this, its, own, its own feed. And this is probably a feed that Microsoft uses specifically. Um, but I need to change this feed. Uh, to allow to allow the, the standard NuGet feed, which I don't know, I don't know if I need that one, actually. But uh, what is the NuGet feed URL? Oops. Let's go to NuGet.org. Okay, and documentation. 
because this is normally something that happens by default um, when you create a new project. Just I need the URL. It's, I just need the feed. That's all. Now this might not be. This is the this is the NuGet feed, but I need the NuGet.org feed specifically. There's two different things here. So what I could do is I could just cheat a little bit. Oh, Calvin. I could cheat by having Calvin do it for me. Uh, I think that's the one I want. So let's say JSON file or a JSON link. And I'm just going to call that NuGet. There we go. Okay. So the feed that comes with it is a more limited one. It'd be us open already. Appreciate it, Calvin. Um, okay. So this is interesting because something else I wanted to mention was that Couchbase.net SDK version 3.0 was just released, I believe. This is an alpha release of the .NET SDK for Couchbase. And there's some, this is a major version. This is 3.0. And there's some reasons why uh, we're releasing a, a 3.0 version. So um, there's, you know, we had SDK 1 that was designed for Couchbase Server 1 way back in the day. And, and then SDK 2 supported a lot of the new stuff that we added, like the like Nickel. Uh, we added full text search, analytics, uh, etc. SDK 3 is going to be aligned with features that we're adding in Couchbase Server 6.5, which is what I'm actually using. Uh, a internal bill of six point five, and some stuff coming in Couchbase. Hmm, excuse me, Couchbase Server Seven. So there's a little bit of a chicken or an egg problem when you're when you're developing an SDK. Is the server and the SDK are two different things, right? Because we have a bunch of different SDKs: a Java SDK, Python SDK, .NET SDK, etc. And so when you add new features to the server. Uh, you have to often have the SDK also change to support those new server features. And so what do you do first? Do you throw the server out there with the new features and then wait for the SDK to catch up? Or do you throw the SDK out there first with new features, trying to make it backwards compatible as possible, and then have the server catch up? And so what, what we've done here, at least with the .NET version, is we've, we've thrown out this alpha release of 3.0 to try to get ahead of the stuff that's coming down the pipe in Couchbase server 6.5 and 7.0. And so one of the main things that's happening is we're adding collections to Couchbase server 3.0, which is a pretty cool feature, but not only collections, but scopes, scopes and collections. So this is a feature for multi-tenant. Uh, you, you, you could do multi-tenant with Couchbase before, but it's a little bit of extra work. This allows you to do, to basically create a, 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 a again, this is brand new stuff. So this is cutting edge. But they're, they're more logical groups of items. Um, and, and buckets are the only thing that groups items right now. But there are a limit to buckets. You know, buckets are not just for data organization. They're for uh, scaling and replication. Uh, and so there's a limit on the number of buckets you can have. Um, uh, right, so they're, they're resource intensive, like it says right here. And there's a finite number of buckets. So for the stuff like we're talking microservice or multi-tenancy, uh, that's challenging. There's some, there's some workarounds, but it's challenging. And so we're, so we're trying to solve that by adding scopes and collections. So uh, I'm just sort of learning this stuff along with you right now. But a scope is a unit of multi-tenancy. So if you have, uh, let's for instance, you're creating some sort of software and you're selling that software to uh, 20, 30 different customers. Each customer could have their own Couchbase cluster which can get expensive, uh, especially if the customers are vary in size from large to small. You could have them each have their own bucket, but now you run into a ceiling, the number of buckets you can have. So what we have now is a scope, and a scope allows collection names to be reused. So I can kind of see where this is going. So you have a bucket, and a bucket contains scopes, and then uh, each scope can contain exactly one unique collection name. Right, so uh, every bucket has a default scope called underscore default. So you don't necessarily need to worry about defining scope to begin with. And, and then you can have um, collections. So let me just see if I can draw this out. 
So maybe I have a bucket called uh, Twitch chat, which I think I do have a bucket called Twitch chat. Can I get logged out again? So here's my, right now I have a bucket called Twitch chat and a bucket called family photos. So I've got a Twitch chat bucket and a family photos bucket. So right now the current state is that's all I have as far as organization. I can either put a document in Twitch chat or I can put a document in family photos, but I'm limited to 10 uh, buckets, roughly speaking, 10 buckets per cluster. So what I can do in the future state is I can have a Twitch chat and in that I could have a, this is a bucket and I can have a scope called Matthew D. Groves scope and I could have a SQL plus plus, which is another Twitch account I have scope. All right. And then family photos bucket, I could have, um, I could have like a, um, oh, I don't know, um, uh, just arbitrarily here, a JPEG scope and a PNG scope. All right. And then inside the scope, I could have uh, a chat collection. I could have, um, well, what else would be another example? Um, so I could have, let's just call it message collection. And I could have a, in Calvin's case, he sent me some bits. So I could have a bits collection and so on. And I could have the same collection inside, I could same a collection of the same name inside SQL++ scope. So notice that the name here is the same, but because they're in different scopes, that's allowed, all right? And so that I could have, in here I could have pictures would be a collection, this would be pictures would be a collection here. So again, two different collections, the same name, just different scopes. So that's, that's how I could do it. So let's say I was working at a company Calvin's familiar with, like uh, Heuristics Solutions. I could have a Heuristics bucket, or in, uh, I guess in your case it might be a Learning Builder bucket. And I, and I know that uh, there are, that Learning Builder has tons of customers. So like, uh, I don't know if I can say their customer's name, uh, that's allowed or not, they'd be happy with that, but they're all a bunch of acronyms, right? So let's just assume uh, FBI is a customer, right? So FBI would have a scope and uh, CIA would have a scope and the NSA would have a scope. So inside that I could have a learning plan collection and I could have a uh, workflow collection and I could have, uh, what's another one? Uh, activity collection, etc. cetera, right? And then each one of these scopes could have that. So you can see how this would help you with multi-tenancy. Uh, you still got it when I come back. <laughs> uh, so each one of these, so if I added another customer, for instance, uh, so I currently have the FBI, CIA, and NSA as customers. I have a, another, um, another customer, uh, IEEE, they come in and they have their own scope. So it's just IEEE data and they would get collection for learning plan, workflow and activity. So I could keep adding more scopes, but it's all inside of one bucket. And this bucket is where things like replication and, and scaling and backup policy and all kinds of things uh, can take place. But uh, just by adding scope, uh, I can build this out. So if my application is connecting to the FBI scope, it's not going to affect any of the data in the CIA scope and vice versa. All right, so I'm isolating these uh, with, uh, for a multi-tenant type of situation. And, and before, up here, I'd have to basically work around this by constructing uh, document keys. So I'd say FBI uh, learning plan uh, 123. And that would be in the same bucket as CIA uh, learning plan 123. Right, so this will just be a way of constructing document keys, which is messier because now I have to, in my application, make sure that I'm accessing the correct key and, and not mix up the data. So we're shifting some of the responsibility away from the application to the database by adding scopes and collections. That's my understanding of scopes and collections. Uh, I'm very much a neophyte. This is, a, this is something that's brand new to Couchbase. It's not even in any, any of the releases right now, but that's something we're working on. And that is why this, getting back to the point here, why this .NET SDK 3.0 is coming out. So we've got uh, the collections and scopes is a big part of it. Uh, and there's some other things like um, uh, what was, uh, using the cluster for nickel queries. So uh, and if you go back to the bucket example, 
if I want to query this Twitch chat bucket, currently I can join that data, just will be a SQL join, to some data in the family photos bucket. There's nothing to stop joins between buckets. So therefore, a nickel query really doesn't run at the bucket level. It runs at the cluster level. And so the, until recently, the SDK hasn't really supported that. You've needed to supply a bucket, uh, even if you're not really querying that bucket directly. Uh, so it looks like they're adding some stuff to make that a little more obvious to the user that it's a cluster level operation. So those are two things that are happening. Very cool stuff going on with the SDK alpha releases. Um, so I need to decide, basically, do I want to use the 3.0 alpha release or do I want to use the latest stable release? And I think for now, I'm going to go with the stable release. I may regret that decision um, down the road because the, the stuff with the scope and the collections might be very cool in Entity Framework. Uh, but I don't know it well enough to, to do that yet. And I, and I think the way Entity Framework is built should be relatively painless. Uh, again, saying not, not much of an expert, but relatively painless uh, to do that sort of thing. So I'm going to go with the latest stable release for now. Yeah, Calvin says, yeah, that's nice. It, it, is, it is a nice feature. And, um, you know, there are other NoSQL databases that have the collections functionality already. But the, I think the scope, uh, not, again, I'm not an expert, but that's relatively uh, unique to NoSQL database. So we've added a next, an extra layer there specifically for multi-tenant purposes. Um, and I'm, I'm curious to kind of understand how that's working behind the scenes to see how that's implemented. So that could be very interesting. Um, but for developers, it's, it's nice because now you can, you can sort your data a little, a little better. So I got some error messages about uh, Newtonsoft. But I'm not sure why, because Newtonsoft is part of the Couchbase client here. You can see Newtonsoft is right there. So let me try compiling again. Maybe Visual Studio just needs to catch up. Oh, it looks like I got another one where I'm putting in this Microsoft Azure. So this file right here, this is the big one. Couchbase client wrapper. This is what... Uh, this was previously Cosmos Client Wrapper. This is what actually does a lot of the interaction with Couchbase itself, uh, or w previously with Cosmos. So this is going to contain a lot of red, as you can see over here. This is a lot of stuff that was Cosmos specific. So I need to sort of stub this out at this point. Um, uh, so this could be, I don't know how much of this is actually, yeah, none of this is following any sort of interface, so I could probably just comment it out. Although, that's going to break. Anything public is going to break, I think. So like this one here, public. So I'm going to... I ran into this problem before as well. Is what I would normally do is I would comment this stuff out and put in a throw new not implemented exception. And put the name in here. This is, uh, I want to say, Couchbase Client Wrapper. Now, as you can see, though, this is a problem because this is an async method, and throwing new does not return a task. <sighs> Which means it's going it's to be compiler error. So I need to figure out, I remember how to do this, look over here on this laptop, is how to basically put in a placeholder here that throws an exception. And, and still be async. So if you have any suggestions for this, Calvin, if you run into this, I'm all ears, because what, what I came up with was actually kind of hacky. If I can find this Couchbase client wrapper. Where is that? That's in storage internal. Yeah, this is, it's in internal. You can see the internal namespace here. This is not a class that's meant to be used outside of Entity Framework. This is only designed to be used for Entity Framework, which normally you would say you put this in internal class, but um, they haven't elected to do that. Then there might be reasons for that right now, but it, having an internal namespace, that, that's good enough for me. I don't necessarily want to mark something internal unless uh, really need to. 
uh, is database wrapper. So I wanted to see how I actually pulled this off. Is it Couchbase? Oh no, it's Couchbase Client Wrapper. My bad. Not all of these are async. Hmm. Okay, it looks like I might have actually written over those already. So I'm going to look this up. Uh, I throw not implemented exception async. And this is, I mean, this is not really something I want to happen, but it's just sort of a, a placeholder uh, until I actually write some code. Well, I mean, one thing I guess I could do is I could say uh, return task dot await. Um, something like this. This doesn't like that. Put an X in there. How does this work? Okay. So that's not going to work. Could you await a task test dot run? I think that's what I want. Yes, I think that's what I want, Calvin. Doesn't like this because what? Cannot return. Oh, task of bool. Can I type this? Got mm, her expression type to return bool. Do you need to await it? Oh, uh, you might be right there, Calvin. <laughs> Return await task.run. Yeah, I cannot convert type void. So do I do this? Something like that. Uh, it's not happy with me still. Something like that, but that's not quite right either. Delegate action does not take one argument. Hmm? I don't want it to be an action. It wants to be a funk, right? What doesn't it like here? Cannot convert type void to bool. Yeah, makes sense. Cannot expert cannot hurt expression type void to return bool. So that kinda delegate action does not take one argument. Something like that. This is getting hackier every time I type. Does not take two arguments. Well I don't <laughs> does it accept a funk at all? Wait, task bool dot run. See, I think it would just be if I specified bool x. But that would do it. It doesn't seem to like that. I still think it's an action for some reason. Does I need to actually return? Oh, uh, okay. It still doesn't like this. Nope, it doesn't, that's not right. It's not that, why does it still think it's an action?
What if I explicitly say, this is a bool, funk. Uh, what am I doing wrong now? Use the clear, but never used. Yeah, I know. They're a task from exception. From exception, yeah, there's a task from exception. Are you saying instead of task.run, I say task from exception? Turn await task from exception. And then what? I put an exception here? Create a task that's completed with a specified exception. A C reference to it never used it. Hmm. So not implement an exception. So what goes in here? Uh, an exception. Oh, new throw not implement an exception. Oh, you're saying this needs to be bool right here. That makes sense. What am I doing? I can't type. Okay. Oh, all right. So it likes that. So that's what I'll leave in there. As long as it compiles, I don't expect this to actually do anything useful. Uh, it's just a placeholder. So that looks about right. All right, what else we got? Same thing down here. So this is going to be delete database. So you can kind of see what's going on here. What I just what I just did was this was the code that would run if a, if it's trying to create a database if one doesn't exist, which may not be something we actually need with Couchbase. It may, it may be something, but this was actually calling some client code, um, but that is not, does not exist in Couchbase. So I'm putting a not implemented exception as a placeholder in there. And it's especially tricky because it's async and I've not done a placeholder async before. Um, it's not something I do very often. Okay, so if we keep going down the red here, we're gonna see other places like this. This is gonna create a container. One doesn't exist, so like this is kind of I think where <clears throat> with the with the Couchbase six point five and seven, we'd actually want to override this to actually create a container or a, or a scope or a scope container or maybe both. Okay, and uh, this is create item once a sync. So again, this is uh, oops, this is actually going to create an item in Couchbase. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to uh, stub it out for now and put a message here. Those messages will help us if we actually run into these non-implemented exceptions when we're executing code, then we know, hey, I need to implement this code to actually make it work. So if the, if the we could look at the stack trace, but if this message is, uh, is output, then we know, okay, that's the function I need to go and implement. So that's... Just creating a good stub there. All this code here. Replace item once on seek. So we've got to create, we've got to replace. This is just CRUD operations, basically. This one's going to delete an item. So there's your D in CRUD. And I think most of the work, a lot of the work with the CRUD operations is going to take place in client wrapper. The other area that's going to be a lot of work is the query. Uh, stuff right so right here you can see create clear query I don't have a class called couchbase results set iterator hmm that's interesting um, but this is going to be a throw new this is not asynchronous it is also private so I could probably just comment this whole thing out since it is private and we've got this is another private class document enumerator don't know if I need that. So comment that out for now. Uh, same thing with this. And I'm not sure if I need this stuff yet. This is all private. And the client.dispose. So dispose does need to exist. But once again, I'm going to have this be uh, throw new not implemented exception. 
this is Couchbase client wrapper dispose. Okay, what else is red? Something else turned red up here. Document enumerable, so execute SQL query. Yeah, we'll definitely need the, to do that. This is going to be a throw. This is just a straight up throw. Not implemented exception. Oops. Just that string. Couch base client wrapper. Mm -hmm. Same thing down here. This is the this is the async version. Uh, so where it is right here. So you can see this is going to execute SQL. This is execute SQL asynchronously. These are going to share a lot in common, but uh, we're just going to leave it like that. It's not bool though this time. It's uh, I async. Hmm. Well, this is not an async method. Okay. It just returns an async object. That's a little outside of the ordinary, but okay, fine. So now you can see all the red's gone. So this should compile, right? It doesn't do anything, but um, getting it to compile is the first step. Okay, assignment made to the same variable. Oh, that's weird. Couch base query context. So some weirdness happened here. Maybe this should be this. Yeah. Okay. It's being passed in. Interesting that it's uppercase. That that might have been lowercase that I, I replaced accidentally. So I'll just do that. That makes more sense to me. Again with the Azure namespace. This is in the tests. Um, so again, probably have to throw out most of these tests, but let's see. Uh, we've got a couch base regions. So this is, so Cosmos has regions. That's a, that's a major part of, of it being a cloud-based service is that it's got some predefined regions. A couch base, of course, can run on multiple regions, but that's not part of the SDK. Um, so I don't think it's part of the SDK. And if it would, I mean, it could run in any region, any data center. It's not, it's not like Cosmos that's tied specifically to Azure. You can run on Azure, of course, um, but it can also run AWS or GCP or anything like that. So uh, that test probably doesn't make sense for Couchbase at all, but I'm just going to comment it out for now so I don't have to keep going back and forth between Couchbase and Cosmos. I don't like committing commented code, but I'm going to leave that there for now. One more place where we're using Azure. This is again in the tests, and this is again region related, so we're going to comment it out. Okay, we've got a building project. Fantastic. So it's just about time to close up the stream. So I, did, I wasn't able to get to what, I, what I've actually done in my other version here is I create a little sample project. Um, so I can, I can just sort of test it out, just like a sort of a smoke test. Obviously, there's lots of functional tests and other tests that need to implement along the lines. But just to start out with, just to try to get some momentum going, I create a little sample project, acts as a smoke test. It's going to put some data in Couchbase, and it's going to get some data out Couchbase using Entity Framework Core. And I don't have time to do that today. I've got to run to another meeting. But that's the next step. So let's go ahead and um, commit this to GitHub. This is the next tricky thing. So I've got this old folder in here. Let's close this out. Um, but I, I, I think, I, yeah, I did, I did do this on Git already, I think. Oh, this, but this currently connects to the, uh, Entity Framework repo. So, uh, I don't want to do that. I'm going to, I have an, another repo somewhere right here. So I want to actually take this. And I'm going to make that um, my remote. So currently the origin is Entity Framework Core. I'm going to go ahead and replace that. 
with that. And I'm also going to just call it GitHub. Again, I don't like using the word origin. Yes, Calvin, I know. I know I could do it via command line. Uh, give me grief. That's fine. That's fine by me. So this should all be... Uh, I'm going to commit all of this. This is pretty much just a meaningless shell project at this point. It's just renamed. So... Um, Copy of Cosmos um, provider renamed to Couchbase. Three provider. Let me just double check that it is three. Why remove? Get remote. Set URL origin new URL. Is that uh, is that what? Uh, why remove origin? Well, I I don't like so. Most people use origin, right? I don't like saying origin because that doesn't tell me, especially when your code is distributed, like what's the origin. So if I say GitHub specifically, then um, I know that this is the GitHub repo. Uh, oh, oh, is Coral uh, giving you grief? Giving Calvin grief? That's good. Give Calvin all the grief. <laughs> so let's commit this. I don't care what you name it. Yeah. Uh, okay, and push this out, and I think this should work. Um, yeah, I can take it. Calvin can take the grief. Okay, yeah, I figured it would not, it would not work because um, it's an old version in there. And so it's going to be lots of conflicts. So what I need to do is do a force. Um, and the force is, uh, let's see, how do I do a force in, in uh, tortoise here? This is something I might have to do from the command line because I'm not sure how to do it uh, from the UI. So let's uh, get bash here. Yep, so we're going to uh, get branch. So I have uh, get what's it? Branch dash A. Capital A? What is it? Ah. Not ha I'll have her. I thought I had. Uh, oh, master's a branch. Okay. Yeah. So what I want to do is I want to git push to GitHub, right? And that's what I was trying before. Oh. Current branch has no upstream branch. Uh, set upstream. Set upstream. Uh, GitHub master. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so it's still, still failed, but now I want to do a, uh, I think I want to do a force. Because what I had in there before was basically with Entity Framework 2. I don't care about that, so it's all, it's all gone. So this looks more like it. All right, well, uh, I think I'll close the stream at this point. I got to go to the next meeting. But uh, thank you everyone for dropping by. I want to thank uh, Mini Wheats, uh, WebProv, Blue Tiger Shrimp, uh, MB Dealer, Bach for Life. Uh, thank you again, Calvin and Coral, for stopping by. Access Log, Garapani One isn't one. Mord Zuber. Thank you all for stopping in. Thank you for the follows. Appreciate all the chat messages. You guys all are awesome. And that's it for today. We'll see you on Thursday.